Okay, picking up where we left off last time with uh, the introduction and derivation of some uh, um, transport problems driven by, you know, entropy, you know, maximization and energy minimization and causes particles to spread. Um, we're going to do a few different geometries today um, and also derive uh, reaction kinetics, biological reaction kinetics from these. The first thing we're going to consider as we build up to our problems is what a lot of times in biology you deal with tubes. Tubes could be blood vessels, veins, arteries, lymph system, things like this. And within these tubes, you might want to have transfer and transport um, through the material. And uh, this happens in this instance, you'd have a cylinder type of geometry with uh, the height L and then the different radii for your object. So in this instance, if we zoom in and look at a cross-sectional view of what the shell is, we have the overall diameter or radius of our object is R, of our vessel is R. And then we would have in this region here is, is our differential small slice of R. Um, and so we would have little r denote this position here. And then this distance from here to here would be delta R. So this position here would be uh, R plus delta R. And so when we're looking at how molecules are moving through this, we, we can use it in terms of um, the material balance or the flux. So we've been using Q or J. Uh, let's use J here. So we can have J um, component I at radius uh, in, in the radial direction at position R. Oh, I'll use capital J. Um, or we can use N as well. And then at, and that's at this region. Then at this region, at R plus delta R, this would be J I um, um, in the R direction, of course. I'm going to drop that subscript because it's, auto, it's automatically in the R direction. This point on at, um, at R plus delta R. Okay, and so um, if we do a material balance for this, this is a ma mass balance, goes way back to the very beginning of the course, but it's just a little different here because we have a different uh, coordinate system. Um, we do a material balance on this slice. We're going to do the shell balance derivation of this. Of course, how much um, material is in that whole volume, this would be N of component uh, I, for instance, would be uh, ci times uh, 2 pi times the radius at that point um, times L, and if delta R is small enough, times delta R. So this is the volume of a shell uh, for that small enough delta R. So then we'd have this in our mass balance equation of partial ci partial t. Um, this will be considered constant in time and space, so we can pull that out of the derivative uh, for our total mass of 2 pi times r times l times delta r. Of course, this is the volume, concentration times volume, gives us the total um, quantity. Okay, and now this equals what's happening in terms of the flux bound. So we're going to have 2 pi times l times the, the, the various fluxes and radii that this is occurring at. Um, so the first one is going to be Ji at position R is coming in um, at this point right here into our overall um, shell. And our overall shell, um, it goes from top to bottom of the overall cylindrical geometry. Okay, so we have this. This is times R. Okay, so that is um, at that position, and then minus, minus J, let me put it on the next line so it's easier to see it all, minus uh, J I um, at R plus delta R times R plus delta R. Why is it times R? Why is it plus times R plus delta R? It's because the, the length, uh, uh, of the perimeter is going to be 2 pi r or 2 pi r plus delta r. I just grouped them together um, in this way because I knew a, a priori that we could pull a 2 pi out. Okay, so then we have those terms 
plus we have whatever reaction terms um, that take place inside of that volume, which is going to be reaction rate times the volume, which is 2 pi r times L times delta r. And of course, this of course applies only for a delta r that is small enough. So what we do next is um, yeah, divide by volume uh, to, to uh, take this to the next uh, simplification. So you end up with partial ci partial t equals j i um, at, uh, uh, at position r times r minus j i um, at, at r plus delta r times r plus delta r okay all this on the top all divided by r delta r when you divide through by that um, and then plus uh, the reaction term so if we take the limit now um, as delta r gets very small goes to zero we end up with this partial differential equation that looks a little different than the one we had before because there's an extra r term is minus one over r times partial r times j i uh, in the r direction all divided by partial r plus r i okay so this becomes now the the shell balance and of course um, we have to substitute in fixed law, so we're going to say j i in the r direction is equal to minus d component i uh, uh, and, uh, times del c i del r. Okay, this is just fixed law broken into this um, into this type of relationship or system. Okay. So if we make the substitution in and put that into the equation, we end up with del C I del T equals D I or call it D I J to specify component I in material J or it, it, so we can include, include that for completeness um, over R. Let me make that better handwriting. Okay, times partial by partial R of R partial C I partial R plus R I. Okay, this of course is still the reactions. So this is a blood vessel. Maybe we have a blood vessel. Maybe we use this equation to look at. Let's suppose you're developing a patch or maybe a device that slowly releases a drug over time and you have this placed, you know, uh, somewhere near a blood vessel and you're looking at the transport of your material in. So suppose we have a blood vessel, okay, with um, inner radius RB and then outer radius, let's say, RO. And we have a drug concentration in blood uh, of C, uh, C, B, and uh, the concentration outside, out of vessel, is some C, zero. Um, so, C, B could be higher if it's a drug that you ingest, and then you're having the blood vessel, your, your circulatory system, deliver the drug to your body and so the concentration is going to decrease as you go out from it or you can have it in the inverse where you have a drug on the outside and you're looking at how it goes into the blood vessel. We can do this either way. Um, for this one let's just do it as a, a drug you, you, you take like Tylenol or something. So uh, then let's say there's no reactions. Okay so uh, we would have a geometry that's a little bad circle. I'm going to do the magic circle which does that, does that, okay. We have concentration here, this is RB, this is R0, and this is C0 on the outside. So, 
That is kind of the cross-sectional view of this geometry. Let's solve this. Let's make some assumptions. Okay, so we're going to have no reaction in this blood vessel wall. We're going to say that CB is a constant. And in the time interval that we're looking at, C0 is a constant. Uh, let's do this uh, at what, what, steady state. This could be actually a quasi steady state where the diffusion is happening much faster than the other chemical processes. The non steady state solution can look like a steady state solution. So, this is a very useful type of problem and derivation. So, let's start by writing down our full equation that we're going to begin and solve dCi dt, dIj over little r, partial by partial r, r partial ci partial r plus ri. Okay, steady state, zero. No reactions, zero. So our new equation, we can divide through by the dij, is simply 1 over r, partial by partial r, of r um, del ci del r. Okay, this is, you can totally integrate this. Um, you can just uh, do separation of variables, okay? So um, uh, the first integration is just a constant, so you a equals um, r times dci dr. You can integrate it again, and you get the concentration. Uh, uh, in the, so this is integrate 1. This is integrate 2. Okay. And then you end up with the solution, a ci equals a times logarithm of r plus b, where a and b are constants. How do we figure out what the constants are? Well, for this, we're just going to use our boundary conditions. Okay. We talked, we talked about what they were, but we didn't write them down yet. So, at the outside, um, uh, at the one boundary, let's say C uh, in our object, is going to be equal to a partition coefficient, which we have to do when we're dealing with mass, it's different than temperature. And this occurs at R equals RB, the inside of the blood uh, vessel. And then we can say that C, uh, C, let's say C at the, what do we want to call this one? C, C1 uh, or something equals phi, okay, times C0. And this is equal at R equals R0. That's the outside region. Okay. So um, you just, I mean, just uh, plug and chug it. You stick this in for one of these, uh, uh, for these conditions. Uh, you stick them into this equation. You start to solve for A and um, for B. So uh, let's just do that. So if we substitute in uh, this relationship for A, you need to you do both of them, um, and then you, do, you subtract the two equations and you get rid of B, um, you end up with A equals phi times C B minus C zero, all divided by ln of R B by R zero. So again, to do that, you just Substitute in both, you know, 1 and 2, and then you subtract the equations. The B disappears, gives you an equation only in terms of A. You solve for A, and then this is the A that you get. Now the B equals question mark. You substitute this in for, for, for either one of the boundary conditions. You substitute this in for A, and then you're left with an equation with one unknown. So let's just do that for B at an internal boundary. It's going to be... Uh, oh, uh, B is going to be equal to feed CB. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, minus the position where you're doing that boundary evaluation at times V times C. B minus C zero. Oh man, let's, let me make this clear. V times C B minus C zero, all divided by the log of the ratio of those two radii. And so then your final solution for your concentration of I at any position within that geometry of the blood vessel was CB 
minus ln of rb over r times v of cb minus c0 divided by ln of rb over r0. So that, that is the steady state solution for uh, the, 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 the distribution or flow of drug um, in this type of geometry. You can easily determine flux by just recalling that that flux term J is equal to okay, minus D times del Ci del R. Uh, you can just take the derivative once or just use the solution which you solved on the way, which was the first integration, A equals R dci dr. So this you can just substitute in uh, directly for here using our value of a and calculate the flux of, of your uh, drug through this, uh, through this geometry.